And we're not done yet. We have two more contestants for today's um, series of pitches. And I'm going to bring up our next speaker. It is Ibrahim Mojitas, who is from SubQ Assist. And if everyone could please give him a round of applause. Thank you very much. My name is Ibrahim Mohidis. I am from the University of Michigan. Uh, and today I'm going to be talking about the SubQ Assist, a device we developed with uh, St. Paul's Hospital in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, aimed at increasing access to long acting contraception. Globally, 225 million women have an unmet need for contraception. And because of this, every year there are over 50 million unintended pregnancies. Moreover, Due to this lack of access, women have trouble safely spacing their pregnancies. And every year, this causes over one million infant deaths. Now, there were many barriers to uh, de increasing women's access to contraception and getting global access. One of the major barriers is a lack of trained providers in low- and middle-income countries. For example, in Ethiopia, where we're working with clinicians, there are over just 2,000 physicians for a population of 100 million. This means that contraceptives that require a high level of skill to administer are simply not as accessible as, as they should be in rural areas. On the other hand, however, there are over 40,000 community health care workers in Ethiopia. If we could leverage community health care workers to administer long-acting contraceptives, this would go a long way towards establishing them as a very accessible means of safely spacing pregnancy and postponing pregnancy. And that's exactly what we're looking to do with the SubQ Assist. The SubQ Assist is a simple injection molded device that acts like an assistive device for community healthcare workers in low and middle income countries, allowing them to administer long acting contraceptive implants as effectively and as safely as physicians and OBGYNs. It acts like a template for a community healthcare worker. They simply clip it on to any standard blood pressure cuff wrap it around a woman's upper arm, and then inflate the cuff to approximately 50 millimeters of mercury. This stabilizes the skin and tissue in a cavity on the underside of the device. The healthcare worker then simply needs to insert the contraceptive implant through a guide on the front of the device, and this ensures that the implant goes in just underneath the skin every time, as accurately and as safely as a physician or a trained OBGYN. We've shown this through both our preclinical and clinical testing. In our preclinical testing, we've compared the SubQ Assist to an expert OBGYN and have found that the implants are embedded as accurately as those done by the expert OBGYN. Furthermore, we have begun our clinical trial where we are looking to see if the SubQ Assist can place our implants in this ideal placement zone just underneath the skin. And what we found is that the implants are going in consistently and accurately. We believe that this makes a major difference to the contraceptive landscape that we have today. Currently, there are short-acting contraceptives that can be administered by minimally trained providers, but because they are short-acting, they're not as effective for safely spacing pregnancy. On the other hand, there are long-acting contraceptives that are great for safely spacing pregnancy, but because they require a higher level of training, are not as easily accessible. Therefore, there's a major gap in the market for a long-acting contraceptive that can be easily administered by a minimally trained provider. And that's where we think the SubQ Assist falls. It can allow a community healthcare worker to administer contraceptive implants as easily and as safely as an expert OBGYN. We think that this makes a real difference in the rural uh, marketplace for contraceptive implants. We calculate that in Sub-Saharan Africa alone, uh, broad use of the SubQ Assist could increase implant use by over 4.5 million implants per year because it leverages this massive healthcare workforce of community healthcare workers and allows them to easily and safely administer contraceptive implants. Moving forward from our clinical trial, we are looking to partner with an implant developer or distributor that could co-package our device with implants and make them available for community healthcare workers in rural areas. Furthermore, we are looking to move on to a field trial with a partner that is in rural areas uh, and working with community healthcare workers and wants to task shift implant administration to these minimally trained providers. 
We really believe that the subcutaneous could have a major impact on access to contraceptive implants in low and middle income countries. Uh, and I'd like to thank you for your time. Fantastic. Round of applause. Great work. And now we'll open it for five minutes of questions from our judges. I'll hand it over to you. Uh, thank you, Brian, for your uh, presentation. Uh, sub two administration uh, in, in Ethiopia, they, they, they are community health workers are uh, fairly well trained. Uh, they have a program which has been going on for a long time. But do you worry that uh, as you go more rural, that the quality of, uh, of service may be less than what you have more in the urban areas? Yeah, that is, a, that is a great point. And so Ethiopia was where we originally saw the need for our device um, and we, where we saw the healthcare system best poised to uh, take up our device. However, it could be implemented at different levels in different countries. So in some places, community healthcare workers might be voluntary education based, but if you move to other countries, this might be very appropriate for midwives or nurses that have a higher level of training um, but this device would bring uh, a higher level of accuracy and consistency. How many Ethiopians are on your team? So we are working with uh, the clinicians in the OBGYN department at St. Paul's Hospital in Add Addis Ababa. Uh, and we're also working with uh, public health researchers at the University of Gondar. So anywhere between 5 to 25 have worked on our project. Okay, and I just want to be clear, how long is this contraception good for? The implants we're working with last three to five years. And are they reversible at all? You, as soon as you remove the implant, uh, fertility returns within 30 days. Can you tell us a little bit more about the product itself? How many times can the sub-Q assist, the cuff, be used before the efficacy or the safety is reduced? And what is the cost, or what do you project the cost will be to the health provider to actually purchase the device compared to other injectables? So our device works with a standard blood pressure cuff. So we wanted to work within the constraint, constraints of the equipment typically used by community healthcare workers. Um, so it uses a standard blood pressure cuff. The device itself is disposable um, in order to, again, fit within the rural context since reusability uh, is an issue with cross contamination. Um, the device itself can be manufactured at scale for less than 25 cents um, and based on some of our studies have seen uh, price ranges up to a dollar. And uh, Ibrahim, when you, you work in the rural areas, how, is, how easy is it to dispose of these uh, the products that you use? How do the community health workers dispose of the syringes that uh, they are using in the community? Yeah, so our device is really meant for uh, community health workers or medical providers that are already providing uh, Depot Provera, uh, the injectables. Um, and so they would be uh, disposing of our devices in exactly the same way that they would dispose of their vaccination equipment and things like that. I have one more question. Um, when thinking about your financial modeling and thinking about the countries on your hopeful list of implementation, many countries do authorize community health workers to do injections, while many other countries do not presently allow, that's not part of their national health policy. Have you sort of taken, and, and it can be a long process for these countries to start to authorize injections um, done by community health workers. Have you taken that into account in your projections and in your planning, and how are you thinking about that? Yeah, definitely. So there's definitely a large disparity between different countries and what they allow or don't allow community health care workers to do. So within some contexts, our device would be more appropriate for midwives or nurses uh, and just allow for an increase in quality and easier removal at a later date, whereas in other countries that uh, have a more professionalized community health care worker, we would be enabling them. Um, so it really comes down to different countries um, implementing our product in different ways. Fantastic. Our time is just about up here. Let's give a round of applause to Ibrahim.